What's up guys, it's your boy Jay from JS Films and today what I'm going to do is give you my pros and cons on the GH5 after one month of use. Fancy intro, hit it. Alright, so I have some notes here so I don't forget anything because I have a lot to talk about about this camera because I actually spent a lot of time with it. I'm not going to, I didn't do a review when I first unboxed it. That's ridiculous how people freaking, can freaking do that and they can just tell you all about the camera after they unbox it ridiculous but let's go ahead and get started first thing I like about this camera is the form factor it just it just acts as a regular DSLR I know it's not a DSLR because it's a micro four thirds but just this small camera form factor is just awesome because you can blend in with just like Chinese tourists all around nobody's gonna look at you weird when I used to have the red scarlet people would be like hey do you have a freaking permit for that but with this camera you can just walk around and nobody's even gonna look at you because they're just so used to this form factor the DSLR form factor of it that people see it everywhere Second thing I like about it is media option. I'm still using my SanDisk Extreme Pro that I used to use with a micro cinema camera, which is really freaking cheap nowadays. Now, I don't know if this is gonna still work in July whenever they have the 400 megabits upgrade to the firmware, but I think it should. Um, more to say about that later on. So the next thing I like about this camera is battery life. It's not that bad. I get about a, an hour to an hour and a half to two hours if I'm turning it on and off. Um, off when I'm not using it and on again when I'm about to use it. It's not that bad um, Battery hole. I'm gonna have to show you what this is But basically I bought a DTAP 2 Canon GH5 battery and when I put the battery underneath the camera There's a hole for the wire, which is awesome I'm not sure if that was a, just like a messed up thing that they did in the design or was it meant for that if it was That's great. Thank you for that. It works all right, next thing I like about this camera is the frame rates. It has a shit ton of frame rates, 48, 60, 120, 180, 48 and 60 in 4K, and the rest of them is in full HD, which is awesome. All right, next thing I like is the custom LUTs that you can put in here. If you don't know how to import the LUTs in this or convert any other LUTs to the VLUTs, check out my other video. I did have a tutorial on that. So, okay, next thing is the Wi-Fi remote control, which is freaking awesome. I love it. Uh, if they didn't have the Wi-Fi control on this camera, I wouldn't be able to do this right now because I did control it with my phone and recorded it and focused it using the phone. Next thing I like is focus peaking. I love focus peaking on this camera. It's, it's pretty awesome. Like I said, I won't be able to do this without focus peaking and Wi-Fi control, so thank you for focus peaking. Okay, stabilization, 5-axis IBIS. Thank you for that. I mean, when I was walking around, it wasn't working as well, but when you're just standing, I have shaky hands, so when you're just standing and you're trying to stalk on people and take pictures of them, like in public, um, it does it really well. It's pretty darn good. But just remember to take it off when you have it on a tripod, which I think I have it off because if you don't, it's gonna start shaking because it thinks it's moving. Okay, next thing is bokeh. For a micro four thirds camera, this thing is not bad. I'm shooting it right now. It's a head and shoulder shot. Um, and you can see the bokeh here. And I did a bokeh test. Make sure to check that out too. But the bokeh is not that bad uh, for a micro four thirds camera. Okay, holy crap. All right, next thing I like is color profiles. There's a shit ton of color profiles in this camera. That's all I got to say about that. All right, next up, 10 bit. Uh, thank you for the 10 bit. Uh, a lot of new cameras that are coming out especially from Sony, like the Sony A9, still don't have 10-bit, but they can charge $4,000, $5,000, and people will buy it, and that's why they're still in the market. But yeah, 10-bit, thank you, and the upgrade is more than welcome later on. Okay, menus, 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 menus. It was really easy to get around this camera. I didn't use the manual at all because everything was laid out. They didn't have a menu section like some cameras do when there's a menu within the menu, within the menu. It's really easy to find what you need in this camera. Next thing I like about this camera is real HDMI because micro and mini HDMIs tend to break a lot more than real HDMI, so thank you for that. <sighs> Holy crap. Okay, almost there. Options and extras. Every time, when I first got this camera, every time I turn it on, I almost always find new things that I didn't know existed. But then again, I didn't read the manual. I didn't read a lot into it, but it was cool to see a lot of options already built in considering the camera was just released. It was packed with features already. Waveform, um, vector scope, you know, all that stuff was already built in. They didn't even have to like add a firmware to add all that stuff. It was already built in right when it was released. You can tell people actually spent time on making this camera and they actually listened to their buyers and consumers because they packed this camera in just at release. Okay, next thing I like is touchscreen. Really awesome that you can double tap to zoom and then focus and then double tap to zoom out. I love that feature. Thank you for that. 
Next thing is Anamorphic 4.3 mode. I am gonna be testing that out next week when the seller on eBay finally ships my freaking Koa uh, anamorphic projector lens. I'm gonna be testing it out, I'm so excited because it has this 4.3 mode and thanks for that Panasonic for including that in this camera. <sighs> okay, LCD selfie mode is always welcome because when you're like shooting alone by yourself, like me alone in the woods by myself, really lonely and stuff, it's definitely awesome to have the LCD flip out screen and thank you for that, so yeah. Okay, next thing I like about this camera is the top left knob. I didn't even know this thing existed until I was taking pictures of my family in uh, during, what do you call this, Easter, during Easter. So what it is, it lets you go from single shooting to time mode to 6K, just, just really just by a twist of a little knob thing. That's, that thing is awesome, it's quick. You don't have to go into the menus. Another thing I like about it is audio. I'm using the audio right now. I have a Sennheiser G3 wireless mi microphone plugged in directly to the GH5, so you can actually hear it. I've been using the GH5 for audio, and I did do an audio test. Check that out as well, but audio is not that bad. Okay, next thing I like is 20 megapixel camera. I know this freaking GH5 is more like a video camera than a stills camera, but uh, 20 megapixel is not that bad. Now, I don't know if it's gonna be uh, beating my Canon 60, which is full frame. I am gonna be testing it out, so watch out for that video. All right, another thing I like about this camera is the price all right here we go with the price two thousand dollars if you have native micro four thirds lenses that's all you gotta spend memory card that's all you gotta do okay but for me i had a canon lens so i had to get a metabone speed booster so people were like oh man you got a metabone speed booster so the camera is more like twenty seven hundred dollars for you but okay let's go with sony then if you have a sony camera and you buy sony lenses how much is that gonna freaking cost you right so for me i had a sony a7s2 i compared it with this camera but i had canon lenses so i had to get metabone speed booster anyway to adapt that to my uh, camera now i could get a cheapo one but then again it wouldn't be fair because i have a metabone speed booster on a gh5 so at the end of it all it's still cheaper to get go with a gh5 because of the sony lenses and you'll have to get a metabone speed booster anyway regardless so yeah that's my take on the price Okay, so let's move on to the cons. The first thing that I hated about this camera was the V-Log because you had to buy it. It had to be shipped to you via mail on a piece of paper and then you have to do all that stuff online. Next time Panasonic, maybe just, inc maybe just make the camera two grand right off the bat, just extra $100 and include the V-Log already installed in there so it's not much of an ha a hassle on trying to get it installed. All right, LCD will need a sunshade if you're using it on like under the sun. It's not bright enough, okay? So you will need a sunshade. I did just buy a small rig uh, sunshade for this. It should come out, it should come next week. If you want me to review it, let me know. If you wanna see it on this camera, let me know. But you will need a sunshade for this LCD flip out screen. Okay, next thing I hate about this camera is the monitor the EVF turns on automatically sometimes when you're switching modes. It's really annoying. Uh, maybe they can fix it via firmware, but every now and then it would just turn on out of nowhere when I flip the switches and I would have to turn it off again. Really annoying. All right, next thing I hate about this camera is the frequency in frames per second. What I mean by this is if you're trying to shoot at 24 frames per second and you want to shoot at 60, you have to change the frequency first before you can go to 60 and 120 or 180. See, you have to do that. After you change the frequency, you have to turn the camera off and then back on again and then you're ready to shoot. I find that quite annoying, but I don't know. They probably had a reason. Probably had to do it for it to work or something, but yeah, I just don't like it. All right, last thing is the freaking charger. It's 2017 and Panasonic GH5's charger is, what the fuck, dude? It has a wire, it has a wire. Like it was, you know, like back in the days when you had Sony hi eights wire charger. So yeah, that could have been a little bit better. I don't know what they were thinking there. But yeah, I don't like that wire charger that you guys had. Okay, so just a disclaimer, I'm not a freaking Panasonic fanboy. This is my first Panasonic camera. I was a Blackmagic user, then I switched to red, and then I went back to Blackmagic user. And then I saw this, it looked good in paper, so I got it. So I'm not a Panasonic fanboy, a Sony fanboy. I'm just trying to tell you what I liked and not liked about this camera. I am gonna compare this camera with a micro cinema camera because people want to see how it compares to it. So if I end up getting the micro cinema camera and keeping it, and I did get it already, I'm just waiting for them to ship it out. The eBay seller is taking forever to send it to me. But if I do end up keeping the micro cinema camera, it's your fault and I hate you for it. But uh, yeah, I got some anamorphic lens coming in too, so I'm gonna test that out with a GH5 because like I said, there's a 4.3 option in this camera now. Okay, so usually I have my videos five minutes or less, but I'm sorry if I went over. Thanks for watching, see you guys later.